Well, now the philosophy of the atmosphere is humanism. The chief end of being is the happiness of man. There's another group of people that have taken umbrage with the liberals. These group, this group of my people, the fundamentalists, that say, uh, we believe in the inspiration of the Bible. We believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. We believe in hell. We believe in heaven. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But remember, the atmosphere is that of humanism. And humanism says the chief end of being is the happiness of man. And humanism is like a miasma out of a pit. It just permeates every place. And humanism is like an infection, an epidemic. It just goes everywhere. And so it wasn't long until we had this. The, the fundamentalists knew each other because they said, we believe these things. They were men for the most part that had met God. But you see, it wasn't long until, having said, these are the things that establish us as fundamentalists, the second generation said, this is how we become a fundamentalist. Believe in the inspiration of the Bible. Believe in the deity of Christ. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. And thereby become a fundamentalist. And so it wasn't long until it got to our generation where the whole plan of salvation was to give intellectual assent to a few statements of doctrine. And a person was considered a Christian because he could say, uh-huh, at four or five places that he was asked to. And if he knew where to say, uh-huh, Someone would pat him on the back, shake his hand, smile broadly, and say, Brother, you're saved. And so it had gotten down to the place where salvation was nothing more than an ascent to a scheme or a, a formula. And the end of this salvation was the happiness of man, because humanism has penetrated. And so if you were to analyze the fundamentalism in contrast to liberalism of a hundred years ago, as it developed, for I'm not pinpointing it in time, it would be like this. The liberal says the end of religion is to make man happy while he's alive. And the fundamentalist says the end of religion is to make man happy when he dies. But again, the end of all of the religion it was proclaimed was the happiness of man. And whereas the, funder, the liberal says by social change and political order we're going to do away with slums, we're going to do away with alcoholism and dope, dope addiction and poverty, and we're going to make heaven on earth, and make you happy while you're alive. We don't know anything about after that, but we want you to be happy while you're alive. They went ahead to try to do it, only to be brought up with a terrifying shock at the First World War and utterly staggered to the Second World War because they seemed to be getting nowhere fast. And then the fundamentalists along the line are now t tuning in on the same, same wavelength of humanism until we find it something like this. Re accept Jesus so you can go to heaven. You don't want to go to that old, filthy, nasty, burning hell when there's a beautiful heaven up there. Now come to Jesus so that you can go to heaven. And the appeal could be as much to selfishness as a couple of men sitting in a coffee shop deciding to go to rag rob a bank to get something for nothing. And there's a way that you can give an invitation to sinners that just sounds for all the world like a plot to take up a filling station proprietor's Saturday night uh, earnings without working for them. And humanism is, I believe, the most deadly and disastrous of all the philosophical stenches that's crept up through the grating over the pit of hell. And it has penetrated so much of our religion. And it is in utter and total contrast with Christianity. And unfortunately, it's seldom seen. And here we find Micah wants to have a little chapel, and he wants to have a priest, and he wants to have prayer, and he wants to have devotion, because I know the Lord will do me good. And this is selfishness. And this is sin. And the Levite comes along and falls right in with it, because he wants a place. He wants ten shekels and a shirt and his food. And so, in order that he can have what he wants, and Micah can have what they want, they sell out God for ten shekels and a shirt. And this is the betrayal of the ages. And it's the betrayal in which we live, and I don't see how God can revive it until we come back to Christianity is in direct and total contrast with a vengeful humanism that's perpetrated in our generation in the name of Christ. 